Okay, uh, so it's five past 11. I think uh, we can start now. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us uh, for this session of online Pegasus Office Hours where we will be giving uh, all of you a preview of uh, Pegasus 5.0. Uh, Pegasus 5.0 is a release which we've been working on actually for more than a year now. And we've been doing a lot of changes in it and we are excited to uh, share what new features are coming your way. Uh, so this session is going to be moderated by me, Karan, and Ryan. Uh, so we have prepared a set of slides for you, which give an overview of what the changes are in FIVO. And that will be for, uh, followed by an online demonstration of uh, the new APIs that we are releasing as part of Pegasus FIVO uh, by Ryan. Uh, so one of the biggest changes which will affect most of the users of Pegasus is that with 5.0, we're going to be releasing a totally reworked Python API to compose, submit, and monitor workflows and configure all the catalogs that Pegasus refers to. Uh, so you know this is not a patched up Python API version. It's been developed brand new from grounds up. And it also has a new YAML-based format to describe your workflows. Uh, something which was lacking in our previous uh, workflow generation APIs was uh, we didn't have a good means for the users to create each of the catalogs that Pegasus requires, such as the site catalog, the transmission catalog, replica catalog, and user properties files. Uh, so this API takes care of that. And it also, in addition, will allow you to plan, submit, monitor, analyze, and uh, generate stati statistics of your workflow using the API itself. So we've wrapped the command line clients uh, in Python to enable you to do that. Another big change which is coming your way with, with the 5.0 is that we are embracing Python 3. Uh, so Pegasus 5.0 is fully Python 3 compliant. Uh, in fact, the 5.0 release will require Python 3 on the workflow submit node uh, to function. Uh, the components of Pegasus, which get deployed as part of Pegasus worker package on the compute nodes, those we have, we are making, we are keeping backward compatibility with uh, Python 2.7 also. In addition, uh, with 5.0, we'll be releasing standalone Python pip packages for workflow composition and monitoring. So that will enable you to import the, uh, the client APIs for in your own virtual event environments. Uh, as far as the other APIs go, like for example, the Java and the R APIs, they will now emit workflow descriptions in YAML format, like the new Python API. Uh, and we're deprecating the old XML based formats and we will take them away starting release 5.1. So as I mentioned, so, you know, we've embraced YAML as our choice of uh, representation for almost everything in Pegasus. Uh, so we've tackled as part of the 5.0 release, uh, the five major user facing things. One is like the, the abstract workflow, which was earlier referred in our documentation as the DAX, uh, the replica catalog that allows you to describe where, uh, where your input data sets reside, the transformation catalog for describing executable locations, site catalog to describe what your execution environment looks like. And we've also changed the format for the Kickstart provenance record. With 5.0, uh, Kickstart will emit only YAML uh, formatted records. Uh, so this change should be seamless to the users as we've already updated our monitoring daemons to pass and populate uh, uh, these new kickstart records. So, uh, you know, in replica catalog, uh, so I have a snippet here as to how you can use the Python API. It's pretty intuitive to create a replica catalog file, add replicas, check sums, and write it out. Uh, by default, you know, we are also aiming for a zero configuration in Pegasus 5.0. So Pegasus will look for a file named replicas.yml in the current working directory. Uh, this version is just one format and it will support regular expressions also. Uh, there's a small caveat that 
you know, if you want to support regular expressions in your replica catalog, you need to specify it to Pegasus as a standalone repl replica catalog and not embed it in your abstract workflow description. Uh, for people who already have existing catalogs, you know, we've updated our uh, converter tool called Pegasus RC Converter to convert your existing replica catalog to the new format. And we would encourage um, our users to start using the API to generate their replica catalogs and the other catalogs in the future. Um, so it's the same thing applies for transformation catalog. So, you know, our Python API will allow for easy creation as a separate file, or you can embed it in the workflow description itself. Uh, here, I have a simple snippet for a single transformation to be encoded into a transformation catalog. Uh, it's a keg executable, which is installed on the site ISI. Uh, so we have a snippet of the code on the left and then how that gets rendered out in the YAML format. And uh, our demonstration will go over these things again. Uh, you can also use the transformation catalog converter to convert your existing catalog uh, if you so desire. Uh, the last catalog in uh, the picture is the site catalog, which our users don't really update it that often. You make it once and then you usually forget about it. But even for that catalog, you know, we've uh, introduced a Python API to allow you to uh, create it as a separate file or embed it in the workflow description itself. And you can use similarly named uh, tool for Pegasus SC Converter to convert your existing site catalog. Again, like, uh, you know, the, for all the three catalog formats, like, you know, we are representing it as, as YAML, but the structure organization is very similar to the previous file-based or the XML-based formats. So I briefly mentioned that, you know, we are also aiming for this concept, which we have in internally called zero configuration. So with 5.0, you would need zero configuration to submit to local HD contour pool. For example, uh, you know, I have a snippet of a simple hello world example on the right, which will just work out of the box, uh, out of your Pegasus install, as long as you have a personal condor installed and running. Uh, with the, uh, as part of this zero configuration effort, you know, we've also uh, introduced sensible defaults for two sites in Pegasus. Uh, so there's a local site which our users would already be uh, familiar with. So historically site local designates the workflow submit node from where you are submitting your workflows and is used by Pegasus to run auxiliary jobs in the local universe. In addition, if a user does not define it, Pegasus will also create a default Condor pool site to be used as an execution site uh, if you don't specify your own execution site or define your Condor pool site in the site catalog. Uh, as part of this data configuration effort, you know, the one big change which we have done, which I want to highlight, especially for our existing users, is we've uh, changed our default data configuration setup in Pegasus from shared FS to Condor IO. So uh, as a recap, uh, you know, Pegasus supports three data configuration uh, settings. One is a shared FS, which most closely maps a traditional HPC web uh, site where you have a shared file system amongst the worker nodes. And then we have two non-shared system oriented uh, setups. One is Condor IO, where we use uh, con inbuilt Condor file transfer mechanisms to transfer your input data sets to the jobs from the submit node. So that's what the default data configuration is going to be uh, in FIVO. So what does that mean for the existing users? So, you know, you should take a minute to check your properties file, see if you don't have the Pegasus.data.configuration specified in your properties file, then most probably 
you are running in the shared FS mode. So in that case, after 5.0 is rolled out or you have installed it on your system, you should update your Pegasus RC and encode Pegasus.data.configuration as uh, shared FS in there. Otherwise, you know, when you're planning your workflows, uh, the planner will fail uh, based on um, missing your interfaces in the site catalog. Uh, another change uh, which we have done in Pegasus 5.0 in relation to catalogs is, you know, uh, we took a step back from what an input and an output replica catalog means. So in Pegasus 5.0, we are delineating those two. So input replica catalog is a replica catalog that users provide to Pegasus to discover the location of input files or previously generated data sets to use for planning purposes. Uh, so in this, like, you know, if you want to configure a non-default replica catalog, you would use the prefix pegasus.catalog.replica. Uh, with 5.0, we are also introducing a notion of an output replica catalog which will register outputs, including file metadata, such as uh, size and checksums uh, to a SQLite based uh, uh, replica catalog in your workflow submit directory. So if you have hierarchical workflows, there'll just be one SQLite database created called uh, workflow named dot replicas dot DB that will catalog all the output files that you have marked for registration in your workflows uh, to uh, in there. And uh, if you ever want to override these defaults, uh, you can use the properties prefix as pegasus.catalog.replica.output. Uh, one of the main reasons why we've done this separation and change is that you know, we've listened to the user questions which have been sent to us on our users list and to us individually where you know people used to inadvertently corrupt their input replica catalogs as they were running their workflows over and over again so by this separation you know it's uh, it will be much harder for users to trip over uh, those errors Another thing which uh, you know we've done in terms of data management for hierarchical workflows is uh, we've uh, tried to improve our handling about data dependencies between Pegasus workflow erstwhile called DAX jobs and the compute jobs in the same level of the workflow. So starting with 5.0, for if you are running hierarchical workflows, for example, in this example, I have a two-node workflow where my First job is a Pegasus workflow that just runs a black diamond workflow and it generates an output file. So now, uh, you know, in your hierarchical workflow, you can designate that, you know, this is the output my sub workflow will create. And then you can have dependent compute jobs, which can uh, take those outputs as input. So the underlying data transfers of like, you know, where the sub workflow runs the jobs, how to get the outputs to the compute job. Pegasus will just handle it seamlessly the way it does for compute job dependencies in the same level of the workflow. Some other data management improvements which we have done is like, you know, uh, Pegasus has a feature of like doing bypass staging of input files. Uh, so we've, uh, exposed it as a finer grain constraint where you can individually select what files you want to be bypassed at the file executable or a container level. So, you know, this is useful for the case where, you know, you are running your application workflows using containers and your container is in a Docker hub or a singularity library. So you don't want all of your jobs to be hitting uh, the hubs, but you still, would want your uh, input data, which may be hosted on behind a squid server or a HTTP server to pull the data directly. So we now allow users to individually select what uh, files they want to be bypassed. Uh, 
in addition, uh, you know, we've also closed the loop on integrity checking where, you know, we were doing end-to-end -end integrity checking on uh, data sets in 4.9 series. Uh, we've expanded it to include user executables that may be staged as part of the workflow and application containers that are deployed. Uh, the third thing, we have also introduced support um, uh, for web dev in our transfer tools called Pegasus Transfer. And, you know, as we've been adding more protocols in Pegasus to support for data transfers, with each uh, protocol having its own set of credentials management, you know, we've tried to do a common credential file in 5.0 where you can manage your simple credentials such as username, password, access key, secret key, tokens in one place. Uh, so currently, like we've extended that credentials file format to web dev and S3. And in subsequent releases, we'll be extending it to other protocols. And our main motivation is to have user provide one file where they can uh, list what their credentials are and then you know Pegasus will ship that around with the jobs as needed. Uh, another uh, sort of sanity check that we have introduced is a credentials pre-flight check in the Pegasus planner. So let's say like the planner uh, during planning your workflow determines that your jobs require a certain set of credentials. It will now do simple existence and permission checks for credentials that it deems to be available on the local site or the submit host. So we will fail early and then later if you have a case of uh, uh, incorrectly named credentials or non-existent credentials. Um, in our monitoring layer, uh, we've also been uh, doing a lot of improvements. Uh, one of the things which some of our users in Asia tripped over was like our monitoring databases were not Unicode compatible. Uh, so we fixed that in 5.0 and in general, we are also enforcing a consistent uh, UTF-8 environment uh, as the workflows run. Uh, in terms of the data that we collect for the jobs and record it in our internal monitoring database, we're also going to be recording these two new metrics. Uh, one is the max R RSS, which is the maximum physical memory used by a job during its execution, and then average CPU utilization, which we compute from the information that's provided in, to us in the kickstart records based on the S time, U time, and the du total duration of the job. Uh, we have already uh, working on extending our statistics tool to report these metrics. And we are hopeful that this will be very useful for users to create application profiles for their workflows and to have a better understanding of what memory or CPU constraints uh, the various jobs in the workflow have. Uh, you know, we've also looked at uh, the common workflow language uh, for 5 .0. And with 5 .0, we've introduced a new standalone uh, command line client called Pegasus CWL Converter, which will convert a subset of CWL version 1.1 to native Pegasus YAML formats. So the aim of this support is that, you know, we want to work with users who may have their existing workflows described in CWL, but want to use Pegasus to execute and manage those workflows. And, you know, uh, you can find more details on the man page and we will also be introducing a standalone documentation chapter in a new user guide about how you can uh, run CWL workflows uh, using uh, Pegasus 5.0. There's another piece in Pegasus, which, uh, you know, not many users may be aware of, uh, which is called the Pegasus Ensemble Manager, which we developed to allow users manage collection of workflows. So with 5.0 release, you know, we've 
you taken another look at the Pegasus Ensemble Manager. Uh, you know, firstly, we made it Python 3 compliant, like all the other parts in the Pegasus code base. And we've also added uh, new triggering patterns, uh, like file-based triggering patterns for workflows. And multiple triggers can be started to dynamically submit workflows as new input files arrive, or each trigger can be given multiple file patterns to watch for. And the triggers operate on a given time in interval. So files that match given patterns or that have been created during the current time interval are passed as inputs to a given workflow generation script. So we're especially interested in uh, our users who have a lot of workflows to run or a collection of similar workflows to run to give on some manager a try and provide feedback. And, you know, we are, we would be looking to actively improve it going forward uh, in our future releases. Uh, so this brings me to the demo part of Pegasus 5.0, where, uh, you know, Ryan also has prepared a, a Docker-based workflow development environment where you can play around with Pegasus 5.0 and test your workflows. So I'm going to hand over uh, to Ryan now to give the demo. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Uh, um, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Okay, and uh, you guys can see this okay? Yes? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, so as Karen mentioned, uh, for this beta release, we've put together sort of a batteries included workflow development environment. Um, this is a Docker container that's running everything that you need to get started developing workflows with our new Python API. And it also serves as an execution environment from which you can submit and run those workflows. So as we'll see, HD Condor is installed in here along with Pegasus and all of its dependencies. Um, and the container also has Jupyter Notebooks running, so you can interact with the container through your web browser uh, in addition to the terminal you can um, connect into the container. So the first thing I wanna go over is how to use this. Uh, basically, all you need to do is clone this repository right here, and um, then you just need to CD into this folder, Pegasus Workflow Development Environment, uh, after that, you need to run this command and it's just going to give permissions to a shared data directory. And this directory is going to be mounted into the container. And so if you are working on any workflows, you just save them to the shared data directory and then you can persist them. The next thing to do is to pull this container. So it's at Ryan Tanaka slash Pegasus workflow dev env. And it'll take a few minutes because the container is quite large. There's a lot of things in there. But once that's done, you can run the container using this command right here. And so one thing to note is that we're exposing this port 8888, and that's because uh, Jupyter Notebook is gonna run from that port. And then also you have to run it in uh, privilege mode because we have this set up in a way so that you can run uh, nested Docker containers. So if you run a workflow using this uh, development environment and one of your jobs themselves need to run in containers, uh, it will work. And so after that, um, this is gonna start up and you just need to go to your browser in localhost 8888 and then enter in SciTech as your password. So I've already done that. And over here, this is you know, what the Jupyter Notebook interface looks like. And so we've provided three sample workflows that cover basic Pegasus constructs that might be useful to you guys. And I'll first begin with our diamond workflow, which is one that we typically use for all of our examples. So the diagram here shows what the workflow looks like. Uh, here the boxes represent input and output files and the ovals represent compute jobs. The arrows represent dependencies between these jobs and the files. So uh, this pre-process job uses f.a as input and produces f.b1 and f.b2 as outputs, and then so on and so forth. So the first thing that you need to do to get started using our API is of course, import the required Python packages. And you can do that by either importing them like this manually, or we have them uh, 
available like this, you can import all. So I'll do that. And the next thing that you want to do is to configure logging. So this is not required, but we do recommend it because if you do plan to submit workflows using this Python API uh, and you want to see output from the tools such as Pegasus Plan, Pegasus Analyzer, which are ones that we have wrappers around, then you would need to have uh, logging configured. Just run that. So now in 5.0, as Karen mentioned, we can generate a Pegasus properties file using the API. Uh, this isn't a YAML format. It's, we still retain the same format that it was before, just a text-based sort of key value format. Um, and essentially, it's just a wrapper around config parser. And so you create a properties object like this. <clears throat> and you pass in uh, your property keys, and you give the values like this. So this one right here will allow us to collect data and you know, store it in Elasticsearch. Uh, and then you call write on this properties object and it'll write to dot slash uh, pegasus.properties. And by default, Pegasus will plan, Pegasus plan will look at this file. Um, another thing that we've added is that if you just wanna see what properties are available, you can use this ls command and give in a prefix. So if I wanted to see what are all the condor properties that we support that begin with condor.requests. You can go ahead and run that and it will just print these out. If you leave it blank, it'll print out all of the properties that we have. So it's sort of just useful if you maybe forget what a certain property is and you just want to look it up quickly. <clears throat> so the next thing that we'll do is create an initial input file to the workflow. Uh, Above, we have this file f.a, and so right here, I'm just creating that. Um, and one thing that we do is anytime that you use a file in the workflow, whether it's an input file or an output file, uh, you want to create a file object like this to represent that actual file. And here you can add metadata to it and so on and so forth. Uh, the next thing that we do is create a replica catalog. So here we specify any input files to the workflow and like where those files like physically reside. And we do that by calling add replica. So first you specify the site at which the file resides. So this file that we've just written out called FA is on our submit machine. So we say local and we give the absolute path to that file. And then when you call uh, write, then this replica catalog is written to dot slash replicas dot YML. And again, by default, Pegasus plan will look for this file. Uh, and here we can see the contents of the file. So this is the YAML format. Uh, this is just so you guys can see what it looks like, but you know, in most cases you won't even look at this uh, YAML file. So the next step is to specify any executables that will be used by the jobs in the workflow. So in Pegasus, we refer to these as uh, transformations. And um, for those of you that are familiar with our text-based transformation catalogs from the previous versions, uh, the syntax here is going to be pretty similar. So for each transformation at minimum, you specify its name, <clears throat> the site that it resides on, uh, the location of it, and you can specify whether or not it's stageable. So in this case, we have uh, an executable called preprocess that resides in Condor pool. It's not stageable, so we can't ship that file around. And this is the path where it resides. Uh, these values right here, it's optional, but we, we spec you can specify the architecture and the operating system that it's running on. And we do the same thing for each transformation. So, just like with the replica catalog, uh, you know, so first you add these transformations to the transformation catalog like this, and then you call write, and that will write out the transformation catalog to this file right here. And again, Pegasus plan will look for it. And here we can see, <clears throat> this is what the YAML output ends up looking like. So finally, since we've created our replica catalog, so we specified you know, our input files, 
we've created a transformation catalog. That is, we've specified all the executables that the workflow will use. Uh, we can begin composing the workflow. And uh, we do that by creating jobs. And typically job creation <clears throat> is as follows. So first you wanna define any input or output files that the job might use. So let's say it, we have these three files right here. Uh, then after that, you wanna define the job itself. And so the argument that you pass to it is the transformation that the job will use when it is run. Uh, next, you can specify any command line arguments that will be passed to the transformation when the job is run. And so in this case, we have these strings right here and you can also pass these file objects that we've defined up here. And if you do this, we end up just pulling out this name and replacing it in the end. Uh, after that, you wanna specify any job inputs input files that is required. Uh, it can be zero or more. And then also specify any output files that the job produces. Now, if you wanna add profiles to the job, you can do so using these functions. You can add environment variables and specify it as a key value like this. Oh, whoops. And then uh, if you wanna add a profile that belongs to a specific namespace, then um, you can do it like this. So add profiles, namespace is Pegasus, the key is checkpoint.time, and then the value is one. Uh, and then after you finish defining your job, you just wanna add it to the workflow. So that's exactly what I've done right here. So we've created this workflow object called Black Diamond, and we've defined each of these jobs and specified their arguments, their inputs, their outputs, uh, and then we've added all of the jobs to the workflow object itself. Oh, whoops. Let me rerun this. Great. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing that you can do is with the workflow handle, you can run the workflow directly from this script. So previously you would create like a bash script and call Pegasus plan on the DAX file that you've created. Uh, but with this, we're trying to make it a little simpler. And so as long as you have Pegasus binaries uh, added to your path variable, then you can use these functions right here. So you can call workflow.plan, uh, which will plan and then submit the workflow to be executed. Then if you call wait after that, uh, it will block until the workflow is complete, printing out this progress bar that you can see down here. And then once that is done, uh, Pegasus Analyzer will run and in the end it'll print more output. And then Pegasus uh, Statistics will be run after that. So I'll just uh, let that run. It'll probably take a minute or so. Uh, but the whole point of this is that less configuration um, and you know, we want to we want users to be able to run everything from just one script uh, like we've done here. Yeah, so I'll let that run. But after this runs and we'll see more output sort of like this, that is output from Pegasus Analyzer and Pegasus uh, Statistics. So I'll leave that and the next example that I wanna go over is um, a workflow that uses a Docker container. So let me, no, this diagram. So in the diagram here, we have this uh, simple pipeline that just does some data processing. We have an initial, initial input file. It runs through some steps and then we get this final output file called scientificresults.tar.gz. Uh, again, these squares represent, uh, these, these blocks represent input and output files, and these uh, ovals represent compute jobs. Uh, these jobs that are colored in blue are ones that will be run inside of a container. So this job preprocess will run this executable that's located inside a container that we specified for this job. And then also this job process text more is gonna run inside a container but it's a little different in that the executable that will be run as part of the job is not part of the container image, but it's one that we will stage in from an external source, which is this HTTP URL right here. So in this case, the container might contain um, 
sort of like a execution environment for your executable. And so the way that we can do this is through the transformation catalog. So the first thing that you want to do is um, create the transformation catalog and then define any containers that will be used by the transformation. So here we've specified a container called tools container. It's of type Docker and it uses this image right here. And after we've created that, you just need to go ahead and add it to the transformation catalog. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is create the transformations. So this step is the same as it was in the diamond example, except that when we create the transformation, we specify the container that the transformation will use. So in this case, this executable called preprocess is going to use this tools container that we've defined right up here. And also when we say this PFN is this right here slash user local bin preprocess.sh. If we say is stageable is false, that means that this path refers to the path inside the container where uh, this executable resides. Uh, in the second scenario, if you say is stageable is true, that means that uh, this path that you give here is going to be some external source that you can pull the file from. So in this case, uh, this file process text second pass.py, which I showed in the diagram before, uh, it resides here and it will be pulled into this container, this tools container and executed uh, there. And in this case, the site can be any site. It doesn't have to be one that's specified in your site catalog. And once you do that, the rest of the workflow is uh, exactly the same as we've shown before. So I'm just gonna go and run that. And so this will, this will start running. Uh, and basically this is inputs. We started with some input right here and then we get some output right here. So it's just some, uh, just a pipeline that the text goes through. So the last example that I have to show is a hierarchical workflow and how this can be done using the new API. Um, so just like before, boxes represent files here and ovals represent compute jobs. So in the blue and green boxes here, we have two different sub workflows uh, that will be run as part of this root workflow right here. Uh, this job ls is part of the root workflow and it uses as input the output from this sub workflow called analysis which is this file f.c uh, and then this sub workflow sleep which is just two sleep jobs that don't produce any files there's just a temporal dependency between this sub workflow and this job right here and then finally this ls command it just produces some output so in the transformation catalog, I've defined all of the all of the executables that this workflow will use, which is preprocess and analyze, which is this right here, preprocess and analyze, and then sleep, this one and this one, and then ls. And we write it out just as we did before. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is create your sub workflows. So here, just as you would normally create a workflow, you create a workflow called analysis workflow, and uh, it produces the final job, produces this output right here. And we've set um, register replica and stage out to be false because uh, this, this output will be registered twice if we don't do that. So you just add the jobs like this, and then we'll not run the workflow, but write the uh, resulting YAML file to this directory called inputs. Then we're going to create the second sub workflow, which is just called sleep and see, so we create it just like this. And again, we're going to write the resulting uh, YAML file to this directory called inputs. And we're putting both of these in this directory called inputs because 
when we run our root workflow, we're going to tell Pegasus Plan that a directory-based replica catalog should be produced that uses uh, this directory. And since it will have uh, the two workflow files, it'll use those workflow files. Okay, so now you can define your root workflow. And so we need to create sub workflow jobs that correspond to the workflows that we've just created above. So analysis workflow.yml and then um, we say is planned is false because the workflow hasn't been planned. We've just created the YAML file and we can add any arguments. And if you add arguments like this, these are arguments that you would normally pass to Pegasus plan. Also, this sub workflow right here produces an output file FC. And so we specify that as well uh, right here. So this is this file FC right here. Then we define um, the second sub workflow, uh, same thing, just like this. And then the job that is part of the, the root workflow, which is LS, it has some arguments. It uses this input file FC, which is the output of this sub workflow right here. And then you add all of these to the workflow, just like you would normal jobs. And then after that, you can run the workflow. And here we've specified uh, input there. So a you know, replica catalog will be built based on this directory inputs right here. So that concludes a demo that you know, I had with these three workflows and you know, we'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Ryan. And uh, you know, uh, while we we are waiting for any questions which uh, attendees might have, I wanted to bring it to your attention that you know there's a version of Fibo uh, called Fibo Beta One that we released a couple of weeks back that you can grab from the download uh, section of the Pegasus website. Um, unfortunately, right now we have an outage at ISI, so the website is down. And we also uh, have done major documentation improvements. Uh, so the whole user guide has been moved to restructured text format. And uh, uh, restructured text is what powers uh, read the docs. So it's a very similar intuitive feel for uh, documentation going forward for Pegasus documentation also. And in the new documentation, we have already updated the migration guide, which our users uh, should uh, follow when migrating their workflow setup from 4.9 to 5.0. Uh, so this is the last slide we had, and uh, you know we opened the floor for questions. If anybody has any questions. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much then for joining this uh, session of Office Hours and uh, feel free to contact us uh, on our Pegasus users mailing list for any questions you have. I uh, just want to make sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you and uh, have a good weekend. All right, bye-bye.